Hey everybody, it's Mr. Smeads, and today we'll be covering topic 1.5, which is the nitrogen cycle. So just like our coverage of the carbon cycle yesterday, we'll be focused on the sink sources and reservoirs of the nitrogen cycle. But throughout the video, we'll point out how the nitrogen cycle differs from the carbon cycle in some really important ways. Our objective today is to be able to explain the steps and reservoir interactions in the nitrogen cycle. And the skill that we'll be practicing with the FRQ at the end of the video is going to involve explaining relationships between different characteristics of environmental concepts that are represented visually. So we'll continue that focus on visual models like we did with the carbon cycle yesterday. So just like with the carbon cycle, the nitrogen cycle is the movement of nitrogen molecules between sources, sinks, and reservoirs. As a reminder, the sources are things or processes that release nitrogen into the atmosphere, and sinks take in increasing amounts of nitrogen. Now, a big key difference between the nitrogen and the carbon cycle is that nitrogen reservoirs generally hold nitrogen for a relatively short period of time when compared with the carbon cycle. So think about the fossil fuels and sedimentary rocks like limestone or sandstone in the carbon cycle that could hold carbon for millions of years. In the nitrogen cycle, most of the reservoirs are going to hold nitrogen for a relatively short period of time. So we can look at some examples such as plants or soil or the atmosphere. So plants are only going to hold nitrogen as long as they're alive. Then when they die, the nitrogen is returned to the soil. And that nitrogen does not stay in the soil for very long because it's taken right back up by plants for growth. Nitrogen also exists in the atmosphere. In fact, that's the biggest reservoir of nitrogen. About 78% of the atmosphere is made up of nitrogen. And a really important key detail to know about this nitrogen in the atmosphere is that most of it exists in the form of N2 gas. Now, this is not a form that's usable by plants or animals. Our final key detail here to know about the nitrogen cycle is that nitrogen is a key limiting nutrient for plants and animals. So all living things need nitrogen in order to make the DNA that goes in every one of their cells and to make the amino acids that build the proteins that their bodies are made out of. And so we have kind of a problem here. And that's that all living things need nitrogen. And the atmosphere is the biggest reservoir of nitrogen. But almost all of that nitrogen in the atmosphere exists in N2 gas, which is not usable by plants or animals. So the answer to this question is nitrogen fixation. It's the first step in the nitrogen cycle, and it is the most critical for life on Earth. So it's the process of this nitrogen gas from the atmosphere being converted into biologically usable nitrogen, which is a form that can be taken in by plants. And that's NH3, ammonia, or NO3, which is nitrate. So this can happen in a few different ways. It can happen both naturally and synthetically. Naturally, it can either be done by nitrogen-fixing bacteria or by lightning storms, which can actually cause some of that nitrogen in the atmosphere to be converted to ammonia. But it's primarily done by bacteria in the natural sense. So we'll talk about two different types of bacteria that can do that now. First is bacteria that live freely in the soil. And so we can see that in the diagram if we look here. There are nitrogen-fixing bacteria that live in the soil. They can convert nitrogen in the atmosphere into ammonium. But there are also bacteria that live in symbiotic relationships with certain plants. Now those are going to be plants that are known as legumes. So those are species like peas and beans. They actually have little nodules in their roots that the bacteria live in. And the bacteria fix nitrogen for these plants in exchange for amino acids that they use to build the proteins they need. So remember, symbiosis is a relationship where organisms are living closely with one another. And in this case, it's mutualistic because it benefits both species. So that's a very important form of natural nitrogen fixation. So if we look at the diagram, we'll notice this blue arrow around atmospheric nitrogen. Again, it can be done by lightning, but it's primarily done by bacteria, whether that's bacteria that live freely in the soil or bacteria that live in the root nodules of certain plants. Then we also have synthetic nitrogen fixation, and this is where humans combust fossil fuels in order to fix nitrogen gas from the atmosphere into nitrate. So this is NO3. This is very energy intensive, but it allows humans to produce synthetic fertilizers, which contain nitrates. And then we can spread over our crops to increase our agricultural yields or the amount of food that we produce. So if we look at the diagram here, we'll see in red, we have this factory to symbolize that this is an industrial process. Remember, it requires a lot of energy input. And then it's going to produce nitrates, which we'll use as fertilizers in agriculture.
So while nitrogen fixation is a critical step to understand, and we spent a lot of time focusing on it, there are other steps in the nitrogen cycle that we'll talk about now. So the first one is assimilation. Assimilation is the process of plants and animals taking nitrogen in and incorporating it into their bodies. So remember that they need nitrogen in the DNA in their cells. They also need it to build the proteins that make up their bodies. So plants are able to access nitrogen directly by having their roots either take in nitrates or ammonia from the soil. Animals though have to eat plants in order to get their nitrogen. Or if they're a carnivorous animal, they need to eat animals that have eaten other plants. So it all starts with plants. They are the key assimilators of nitrogen. So if we take a look at the diagram, we'll see in the blue circles here, nitrogen is gonna move from the soil into plants roots and into the plants body. And then animals will eat the plant and that's how they assimilate nitrogen. Then we have ammonification. Ammonification is kind of the opposite in that it is soil bacteria, microbes, and decomposers converting waste and dead biomass, so dead organisms, back into ammonia that returns to the soil. So just like in the carbon cycle, we had the cycling of carbon between photosynthesis and respiration, we have something similar in the nitrogen cycle where organisms assimilate or take in nitrogen, but when they die or produce waste, then the bacteria in the soil and the decomposers break that waste down and they return the nitrogen that was in the biological matter back to the soil through ammonification. So if we look at the circle in green here, we can see again these dead animals, dead plants, or their waste just gets returned to the soil to ammonia by these decomposers and other soil microbes. Next, we'll talk about nitrification. Nitrification is the process where ammonium, NH4, is converted into nitrite, or NO2, and then eventually into nitrate, NO3. Now this is also done by soil bacteria. So I hope you're sensing a trend here in the nitrogen cycle, and that's that bacteria are very critical at almost every step of the process. So we can see that process of nitrification outlined here in the orange circle. And then finally, we have denitrification. Denitrification is the conversion of soil nitrogen, specifically nitrate, back into a gas form. However, this is going to be the gas form nitrous oxide, or N2O. And so this is going to be converted again by bacteria, released into the atmosphere, and eventually that nitrous oxide can break down to form nitrogen gas, and we've completed the cycle. Now we'll wrap up by talking about some human impacts on the nitrogen cycle. So humans have an impact on the climate through the nitrogen cycle by the release of nitrous oxide. Nitrous oxide is a greenhouse gas, which means that it traps heat in Earth's atmosphere and warms it up. Now it's produced by agricultural soils. So when humans clear land and till the soil to plant their crops, the bacteria in the soil are going to, through denitrification, turn the nitrates in the soil into nitrous oxide. This is especially prevalent when the soil is waterlogged or over irrigated. And so by the growing and production of human food, we contribute to greenhouse gases, particularly nitrous oxide. Then there's ammonia volatilization. So this is where excess fertilizer can lead to ammonia gas actually entering the atmosphere. This creates a couple issues. One is acid precipitation. So the ammonia can combine with water in the atmosphere, fall to earth as acidic rain, and that can create a lot of environmental issues. And there's also a human health consequence. Ammonia gas in the atmosphere can combine with other pollutants and can irritate the respiratory tracts of humans. And it's also just lost nitrogen from the agricultural fields themselves, which results in lost profits for farmers. And finally, we have the issue of leaching and eutrophication. So when we use synthetic fertilizers, we're often over applying nitrates to the soil and we're putting more nitrates in the soil than it can hold. So this leads to something called leaching, which is where rainwater or irrigation water carries the nitrates right out of the soil. Think of it as kind of washing them or flushing them right out of the soil. And that agricultural runoff can enter local bodies of water like streams or lakes. And what happens is all of this excess nitrogen fuels aggressive algae growth to the point that the algae covers the surface of the water and it actually blocks the sunlight so that aquatic plants below the surface don't get the sunlight they need, which can kill those plants. FRQ 1.5 today, we're going to be looking at explaining the relationships between different characteristics of an environmental concept. So I want you to try to describe one chemical transformation that occurs in the natural nitrogen cycle 
and then explain the importance of that transformation to an ecosystem. All right, everybody. Thanks for tuning in today. Don't forget to like this video if it was helpful. Subscribe for future Apes video updates and check out other notes over here to the side. And as always, think like a mountain, write like a scholar.